Hello and welcome to Roar Time with Coach Jason Gibson of your Columbus Lions, Director of Operations and Head Coach. I'm your host, Eric Fowler, better known as Dr. Love on the mic, the voice of your Columbus Lions. Well, Coach, we talked a lot of smack, you and I both, in preparation for Jacksonville. And uh, unfortunately, we came on the um, bad end of the stick, I'll say. Your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it happens. It is what it is. I'm not sure it's been so long since we lost. I'm not I, really sure how to act. Exactly. I don't know how to feel <clears throat> about that. You know, Two so, years in the making, actually. If that's the best in the league, which it is at this point, we'll be fine. Couldn't agree with you more. We'll be fine. Yeah. We'll be fine. It was good. It was good. Uh, it was a great game. It was a really good game. Um, <clears throat> Jacksonville's got some good vets. They played solid football and they played mistake-free football. Yeah. And uh, we didn't. So, you know, kudos to them. Hats off to Jacksonville. You guys came in. You, you did your thing. And, but uh, it's like I said, I don't have to win the first one. I just have to win the last one. There you go. That's hey, because you don't, you don't remember the stuff in the middle. Well, you know, you tend to, but at the end of the day. You know, and I don't want to jump ahead of ourselves, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to get a lot better just because I've been doing this for a while. Exactly. You know, you know, we're not, from where our peak's going to be, I'm not sure how much better Jacksonville's going to get mm. as far as, you know, personnel. They're going to be that team, and they're going to be the same. They're not going to do a huge ch turnover. Um, you know, we will, and we'll continue to get better. And I don't have to win the championship in week one. I just got to win it. And when all the years that we won um, championships and won all those games, we always peaked, you know, third, fourth game to the end of the season. Yeah. You didn't peak week one. Um, but the five, you know, five turnovers or something's never happened either. Exactly. But, and and, you know, and we'll, speaking of turnovers, I mean, we, well, if we even take it from the game opener, um, Jacksonville came down first play of the game. And they scored right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't upset because I know it's arena football. Yeah. From a fan standpoint, I mean, I'm sure all the fans are sitting in the stands going, oh, oh no, <laughs> oh no, one play. I mean, it's arena football. Yeah. The good thing is they did it really quick, so they left more time in the game. But uh, it was on Darius Brooks. It was, a I mean, the protection on that play, I mean, Grady had all day to throw, which was good for them. Uh, the receiver ran a good route. I saw it coming. Mm -hmm. I saw him setting them up for the corner route. And, uh, Darius got his first game, got his feet wet. Hey, welcome, so, you to, know, the, welcome to the to, to Yeah, the and I told him, I told him, I said, no, it's not a big deal. It's one play. It's, it's you know, you got to learn from that. That's right. So every situation you have, you got to figure probably the experience on Jacksonville would probably push 40 years of football hmm. with, with everybody on their team with all their experience. Okay. I had two DBs never played a game before. Um, and we did well. Yeah. I mean, we, I thought we did really well. So, uh, looking at that, but you know, Darius got his, you know, got his feet wet. They beat him for a touchdown, and now you know. That's now right. you learn. Let's rock and roll. You now you've got got the experience behind us under yep. your belt. One notch under your belt. Let's go ahead and move forward. You know, but then they missed the extra point. They did. And we get the ball, and we answer. So now we're up seven six. There you go. There and you so go. then I knew. I was like, okay, I'm not big. It's going to be a ball game. Yeah. It's going to be a ball game. I thought the key point in the first quarter was they drive down and we stop them. Absolutely. Defense was, was, was in was place. Good, yeah. Absolutely. We stop them. They kick a field goal. They go up 9-7, and we've got the ball. And I'm thinking, this is the game it's going to be. I knew it. This is the game it's going to be. Back and forth, back and forth. You know, points here, points there. And we fumbled the snap. Yeah. Yeah, that and hurt. That we hurt. fumbled the snap, took some wind out. You know, that, that's just, you can't do that. And, um, and it kind of went downhill. From, the second quarter was a huge bust for us, um, looking at the stats. I think we gave up, um, and I had them here. I think we gave up 23 points in the second quarter. Oh, yeah. Well, because it was fumble snap, interception, 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 That's right. interception. That's right. And that kind of really dug us in a hole, you know, at that point. So um, that's kind of where we were at. Talking about the interceptions, um, what can we say about Espinosa? Well, I mean, if you look at the stats, he was 10 of 17. So he was almost 60% minus the three picks. Everybody sees him. Yeah, one of the, you know, two of the picks were, yeah, they were, he stared the guy down. He knows it. We can fix that stuff. Yeah. He stared it down and, and threw right in their hands. One of the picks wasn't even his fault. The receiver kind of changed the route a little bit. See, people don't see that okay. in the stands. All they see is, oh, he threw another pick, you know, boo, boo, he's terrible, get him out. But before that, you know, he threw in the touchdown to Reeve. 
Exactly. He threw another touchdown to Fordson, which was a great throw. Yeah. Um, and his percentage was, was really high. But then the, the third and final pick was the one he threw that really the receiver kind of botched the route. Gotcha. And it made him look terrible. But and unfortunately, um, the quarterback has to take the He's got to take it. That, yeah. I mean, he takes the, 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 the praise, and he's going to take the, the criticism. That's right. You That's know, right. Yeah. myself included. So at that point, I, we had to make a change. Yeah. We had to. His confidence level was really where it didn't want to be, um, and I didn't want to set him up for any more failure and wanted to, you know, make a change. That's right. Okay. Well, Darren Daniels gets in the game, and, and we can be, begin to see the momentum building at some point. Um, yeah. What do you say about Darren? What were his, his performance? Your, your thoughts there, Coach? It's weird. His numbers weren't as good. Really? No. Wow. I mean, well, I, well there's two numbers that, that all matter. I mean, I could sit there and call about completions and percentages, but yeah. he had four touchdown passes okay. to finish the game. What was key was to have that many turnovers in a row and beat it. We were down 40 to 13. Correct. We were. We were down 40 to 13, and I'm thinking this, this isn't going to look good. That's right. You know, how are we going to respond? And then we wind up, we make the change, and we outscore them 28-16 to 16 down the stretch, which was sure huge. Did. Yeah, it was. I thought it was huge. But anyway, so it's down 40-13, to 13, and I knew if we don't score, it was going into halftime, and we were getting the ball back. So I'm looking at the clock, and I'm counting. I said, all right, here's what we'll do. I'm going to milk this clock no matter what. They're not going to see the ball the rest of this half. Mm -hmm. And we're going to score to make it 20-40. to 40. Then we're going to get the ball back. We're going to score, make it 20, 40 to 27. Now we've got a ball game. That's right. And we went down and we did. We scored, you know, I think seven or six seconds left in the half. And Darren led us for a touchdown drive. Absolutely. Put us, got us down by, you know, really three scores. We came out second half. And that was the key in the game to me was coming out of the second half. I knew we needed to score that drive. That was the only drive of the game that Darren did not score. He scored on every single possession he was in at quarterback. Mm. That's big. But in that drive, we dropped a touchdown in the we end did. zone. That was, was that uh, Landon or? Brandon. 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 Unfortunately, okay. no harm, Brandon, but I'm just, we've got to talk about it. So uh, <laughs> we dropped the touchdown in the end zone. There was a fourth down play. I mean, they, they, it was pass interference. Everybody saw it. Oh, but, yeah. But that was huge. And if we score there, it's 20 to 27 40, because we wound up stopping them again on another field goal. We did. So. Uh, that was the, the turning point of the game, but for us to fight back up in there, you know, going through the third quarter was, was big for us. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I think it's, it, it's important to recognize the fact, folks, especially Lion Nation, that, you know, these kinds of situations are going to occur at the QB level. And, and you and the genius and the coach that you are, you made the necessary changes when you felt oh, the thanks. time was needed. Yeah, you're a genius, coach. Got to give you credit, man. Um, let's talk about our, our linebackers, coach, the defensive side of the ball. Uh, yeah, you know, it's weird. You, 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 film's great because you watch the game and you have a certain perspective. So I went into halftime and I gave my speech. I wasn't mad at halftime because I thought we were playing pretty good. I mean, that's, that's an arena quarterback with 10 years' experience. They finished the game with, and I was trying to f figure his stats or something, uh, he only had 182 yards passing and three touchdowns. You got an AFL quarterback with three touchdowns? Thought the DBs were pretty good. Now they ran the ball well, yeah, and they could, and I would have done the same thing. But um, the linebackers were good. They 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 were they were they, they were good. Okay. Two linebackers never played really arena football at linebacker, so I got to give them a little bit of leeway on that. Okay, and we got to make an improvement at that position. Uh, bottom line, um, we got to coach them up a little bit better. Um, they got to get it a little bit better, and they got a little more experience. So we're going we're gonna to keep kind of finagling that position for the next couple of weeks okay. until we find out the match or what we need to do there to make that an impact. Their Jack linebacker was an impact on the game. Number 11, Hunt, was an impact on the game. Yes, he was. Big time. He had two, two picks. Um, he made a difference. And, you know, we had Kevin there. Kevin, played, Kevin led our team in tackles. So uh, he did a great job at Jack. But we have to have a little more um, – we have a little more influence with our, our Mac and, and our Jack combined as a unit. Okay. So we'll make some improvements there. Okay. Speaking of that, did, is, is there someone that you, you are presenting in the Arsenal or adding to the Arsenal for that? Yeah, Laron Furr is going to play this week. Okay. Uh, Carver grad, um, you know, something about Laron, man. I, he's a terrible practice player. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't, doesn't matter. He just, he's, you know, Laron doesn't say much. He's just a 
player. Some guys just got it. You know, when he's 6'4", he's 250, you put him in the game and he makes plays. So I'm going to put him in the game, he's going to make plays. Playmaker. That's he's a need. playmaker. Yeah. And so we need him. I need him to step up big this week. He, he's going to start at Mac. You know, Derek Cannon's got a little bit of a foot injury as well anyway. So it kind of works itself out in, in, in the end of the day. I'm expecting LaRon to get in there and, and do well. And one thing that LaRon has also going for him is, you know, he's, he's a local player. So Absolutely. you've got LaRon, you've got Darren Daniel, you've got Jarmon Fortson, Kyle Griswold, Ryan Holland, Darius Brooks, uh, Deion Small. You know, not only will the pressure be on him from me, as a coach to perform, I think his biggest pressure is his own teammates. Oh yeah, being a local, I think there's a little bit of pride there. Yeah, I talked with him in private a little bit. I talked with Jarman. You know, if Laron doesn't get it done, I guarantee you Jarman will be in his ear before I am. Absolutely. And uh, you know, in life, I'm always worried about what my peers think of me. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that's going to work out for us. Well, and not only the pressure from your teammates, but the pressure from your hometown to get out and perform. I mean, these, these are people who have watched you since a child, since the day that you really picked up a ball. Right. You know, and, and have watched you through your whole, your whole matriculation process, even through high school. What is uh, Matriculation, uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I, That's I, a you, great word. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth of the matter is that the pressure is not only on from the competition that you have amongst the camaraderie of your, 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 your cohorts, mm -hmm. but you got something to, you know, prove when you get off that gridiron and go home. You know, Definitely. Your, your hometown folks want to be able to, you know, have something to say about your performance as well. So Definitely. Yeah, it, I think it goes hand in hand. So, well, good. And, and Lion Nation, that's all the more reason why, you know, the support is so great um, and so significant from your end because you've got that hometown talent right here in um, Lion Nation, and, and we appreciate that support. Coach, as, as we look forward, you know, we, we, we're putting this game behind us. You've seen the film, you know, you've, you, you've calculated the errors, and, and I know you're going to make the necessary mm -hmm. adjustments. Uh, going into this next game against um, Corpus Christi. The Rage. The Rage. <laughs> I got a formation called Rage. It's uh. funny. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So speaking of that, um, and I don't know if, what you've seen on them up to this point, Corpus Christi, that is. I've watched the film. I have. Okay. Finally. They finally uploaded it. Ah, uh, okay. But hold it back on us. A little okay. jab. But your thoughts going into this game? Uh, you know, from you know from the film, I mean, they got they, I think they got an athletic defensive line. I think they can get after. It. I think they can play defense. So they 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 were, you know, contrary to what the score was on the on, you know, I saw the score. I think it was fifty five twelve or something like that. They were harassing their quarterback all day long. Mm. Their quarterback stats for Monterey weren't very good. I think he was ten of twenty one or something. It was not good. Not impressive. And all. that was. That was part of Corpus Christi's defense. I think that's the strength of their team right now, uh, is, the, is they, they can get after it. They got players down there. Okay. I know uh, their GM, their GM's a good guy. They know how to get the players that they want. And when they get the scheme that they want, they're working out hiccups right now. That score is really irrelevant. Mm. Uh, you know, and they're in, they're in the same situation. They've played one game and everybody's thinking, oh my goodness, Corpus Christi. No, look, they're going to be fine. Okay. They're going to be fine. Okay. So I've seen a lot on film. They got a big, tall quarterback, another big, tall guy. You know, he's 6'6 six, six plus. Um, they understand the concept of the games. They, you know, they got a good coach down there that understands arena football. They're going, to, they're going to come out and they're going to make improvements like everybody else and they're going to compete. And they're going to get after a bunch of Texas boys. Awesome. So, well, you know, they say everything is, is bigger in Texas. We shall see coming from Georgia. And then as we go a little further, Coach, our next home game is against um, in-state rival, the Georgia Firebirds. I've called them the Yardbirds. Yardbirds. And, but... Uh, Lion Nation, we're going to go, jump to a commercial message. We want you to hold to your seats. We'll be back with more football here with Roar Time. Thanks, Dr. J. My back feels so much better. Now tell me where I can go for my headaches. Really? You don't need to go anywhere else. That's what we do. Well, what about my shoulder? That's what we do. Pinch nerve? That's what we do. Well, what about this problem? That's what we do. Sciatica? With almost a half a million patient visits over the last 34 years, don't just take my word for it, ask a friend. Call Dr. J. Broadwin and Associates today. Welcome back Lions fans. This is now the segment that we call our weekly awards. 
And, uh, Coach, we're going to kick it off with the Little Caesars Offensive Player Award. Who do we got, Coach? Uh, uh, hands down, Michael. Go ahead, get it. Hands down, right? The Goose, yeah. Uh, the Goose, Michael Reeve. Uh, Mike had nine catches, 101 yards, two wow. touchdowns. He just had a great game, and uh, I, I thought he solidified himself. He, I think he's probably one of the top two or three. I think my three receivers are top three receivers in the league. So Absolutely. I know other guys are watching it when you put up the numbers and you can back it up, but until then, you know, that's the status we're going to take. But, you know, again, Michael's the – Little Caesars Offensive Player of the Week. And if you get a chance, go get a $5 hot and ready. It's pretty good. My kids love it. Uh, thank Mike Osman uh, and Little Caesars for putting together that promotion for us. Caesar Caesars, yes, we appreciate that. Collision Surgeons, hit of the week, Coach. Who was that guy? That's my favorite one. That's Kyle Griswold. It wasn't so much that it was a big hit, but, you know, it was a huge fourth down play. They got, they got a fullback that's easily 300 pounds yeah. that have been killing us. That was a big guy. And uh, fourth down play, Kyle comes off the side, comes off the back edge, and tackle him from behind, and he got the collision surgeon's hit of the week. That's awesome. Congratulations, Kyle. Congratulations, Michael, for your award as well. And then we have the Sprague's Napa catch of the game. This is an interesting one. Very interesting. So, you know, Frank and you guys out there, Sprague's Napa, um, the catch of the game is number... 58, Dion Small, he's our offensive guard slash tight end. Yeah. It was a big play late in the game, I think third quarter. Um, you know, it's kind, it kind of a trick play kind of thing, and, and we hit him, they weren't looking, and Dion made a great catch. And then if you watch the clip, he made a nice little hurdle. Yeah, there's a, yeah. Because I always tell my big guys, whenever big dudes catch the ball, the little DBs, the first thing they do is they're going to cut your feet, there you go, or they're going to try to get the ball out. That's so um, that's what happened. So congratulations to Dion and uh, for the Naples Catch of the Week. Fantastic. Well, congratulations to all of our recipients of our weekly awards, and we'll continue to pub these opportunities up again. Little Caesars Offensive Play of the Game, Collision Surgeon Hit of the Week, and Sprague's Napa Catch of the Game. Line Nation will be right back. Stay tuned for more Roar Time with Coach Jason Gibson and your host, Eric Fowler. Imagine a life-changing injury. Imagine the fear and unknown. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team, the only physicians in the area with advanced certification in orthopedic sports medicine, treat sports injuries with innovative techniques. The Houston Clinic has helped nearly a million athletes live without pain. Imagine getting back in the game. Imagine the best game of your life. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team. Welcome back to Roar Time with Coach Jason Gibson. I'm your host, Eric Fowler. Better known as Dr. Love on the mic, your voice of the Columbus Lions. And Coach, before we went into break, we were talking about our in-state rival. Uh, that game goes down Sunday, April 2nd, back in the jungle. The Georgia Firebirds, I've called them the Yardbirds. Um, you know, I'm still at that point where I'm not going to give you much respect when you come into the jungle. Yeah. I don't care who you are. But um, we've got Georgia Firebirds coming this way. Georgia's a good team. Okay. And I don't care what the score says. Uh, they've got they've got a good coach. Antoine Savage was one of the best arena players back in the day. He's their head coach. Cecil Lester is one of the best arena quarterbacks that we've played for. He gets the game. So when you got that kind of leadership, they're going to be good. And then they bring in Terrence Ibagua, John Harris, um, you know Derek Winbush. They got some old vets there that know how to play the game. Okay. They're going to get better. They're not going to tolerate. It. It's going to be and it's a rivalry game. So Absolutely. it doesn't matter. In state. Yeah, I mean, they're going to come up here ready to win, and it's going to be a tough game. Um, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not looking forward to it because okay. I know how hard that game's going to be. It's a Sunday kickoff, so, you know, it's after church. Um, I think it's a 6 p.m. kickoff Sunday Correct. afternoon. Okay. It'll be a great game. Bring out the family. We've already sold over 200 tickets already, already, and we're two weeks out. That's beautiful. And that's a great opportunity, Coach. You know, coming from church, you don't even really change your clothes. Just come just as you are. Just like you go to church. Come as you are. The Lord said, come as you are. Come to the jungle. Just come as you are. Right well, up to church. And, I mean, it's a great time. You, yeah. you, you know, go to church. You go out. You have your uh, you know, Sunday lunch with the family, Sunday uh, you know, midday lunch. You know, hang around the yard and come out to a game at 6 o'clock. By the you time go. you get home, it's 8.30. Put the kids to bed and relax. There you go. Can't ask for anything better than Lion Nation. So, Coach, we are, are, are looking at some shout-outs here that we like to kind of highlight our sponsors. We would be remiss if we did not give our shout-outs. So, Coach, take it away. Uh, make sure we always got to talk about Clarion Inn uh, for Exit 7, Highway 185. He's the official host hotel for the Columbus Lions and visiting National Arena League teams, formerly known as Holiday Inn North. Um, all Lions fans, Lions nations uh, that come into the game, if you go to our website and click on the top corner where it says Clarion, or Clarion, sorry, 
Um, you get a lion's rate when you come in. It's, a, it's a super clean. The breakfasts are phenomenal. And uh, that's our host hotel, and you know, they support us. And people don't understand, without the support, these are the little things that make our team great. Absolutely. When, other, when visiting teams come in, it's about professionalism. It's how you treat people, and, and Clarion's one of them. Um, also, we got to uh, mention uh, Dr. Jay Broadwin, uh, an associate since 2007. He's the official chiropractor for the Columbus Lions. Dr. J uh, always has the players' backs. Uh, Literally, Coach, we appreciate that. I was hurting this week. <laughs> yeah. I went and saw Jay. Um, he took care of us. Uh, Houston Clinic, the Lions medical provider. Uh, we welcome back to the team Dr. Ryan Garinger and obviously our uh, athletic trainer, Morgan Carr. Make sure we got to give a shout out to her. And uh, one more, uh, Columbus State University, longtime sponsor with the Lions. Uh, all CSU students and staff get a discount with their ID at the game. So we want to make sure you get the students out there. We had a huge turnout last game. It was awesome. Go Cougars. Um, they've, had, they've, provided us several, uh, they've provided us several interns over the years. Great school, uh, great staff. And, um, you know, that's just some of them. Absolutely. Well, sponsors, we, again, we want to give you shout outs as, as often as we can. Uh, and this just goes to who we are as Lion Nation because we have this hometown support. Um, it's not just happening here in Columbus. It's happening in Phoenix City and points and, and abroad. So we, we just appreciate all the support that we can get and we continue to ask for that. Also, Coach mentioned about our website. Make certain that you go to get more information about just what we're doing in Lion Nation, columbuslions.net. Um, you can also get information about your tickets. If you're trying to get more tickets for the next home game, of course, Sunday, April the 2nd, please stop by the Columbus Civic Center to purchase your tickets as well um, and get more information about how you can get group rates uh, because we offer great group rapes, Coach. Great groups. Yeah, we had a ton of, we had Spring Harbor was a big group. We had uh, CTV Beam was a big group. We Absolutely. had Glenwood Baseball was at the game, was a big group. We had uh, another group from, uh, I think, Hale High School in Alabama was a, a baseball team. Okay. They brought a group. It's a great time. Bring them out. Uh, see, see a great game against Georgia Firebirds Absolutely. on April 2nd. And some great halftime entertainment. We actually had a local dance troupe. Um, in addition to our Columbus Lady Lions cheerleaders and the Lionettes. Oh, the lovely little Lionettes. You know, our junior <laughs> cheerleaders, they're out there doing their thing and having a good time. And parents, we appreciate your support and allowing your children uh, the opportunity to come out and participate. It's just a family kind of environment that we offer in here going in the jungle. It gets rough and rowdy, yeah, because it's football, um, but it's that kind of environment where you can just kind of come back and kick back, tailgating going on before the game. Uh, the Lions walk is going on, so we encourage you to come back out and support us on Sunday, April the 2nd. Coach, as we go into any additional information um, about our play, about the competition, because this is a real, this is a real league, Coach, the NAL. Yeah. This, is, this is high competition at its finest. Just all the way across the board, all the way across the board. And, and what's great is every week, even as a coach, I look at certain matchups, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to watch that game. It's a pretty good game, yeah. you know. I'm waiting to see what happens this, this weekend with High Country and, and Lehigh Valley. I, I you know, um, it's, I've seen both teams on film. I have my own opinions. I'll keep them to myself. That's how it should be. Um, but I want to see how they match up against each other. Okay. You know, uh, you know High Country played, uh, 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 you know, Albany and, and, and beat up on them a little bit. And then, of course, Lehigh Valley beat up on Dayton a little bit. Okay. Um, and so now they're going to match up. I'm trying to. I'm trying to mince my. I'm trying to pick my words really carefully here. So <laughs> it's kind of hard to do. I understand. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying. Now it's going to be fun to see how they match up. And of course, Georgia plays Jacksonville this week, and so that'll be a good matchup. So that's what's great about the league. Different weeks. Every week there's a good matchup. It's Absolutely. not just you know letdowns. So unfortunately for us, I felt that the game of the year was the first game of the season. Hey. And that will be the last game of the season. Interesting. And and that's where we travel to Jacksonville. Um, I, I can tell you when we walked and during the Lions walk and, and I actually had the opportunity to uh, meet some Jacksonville Sharks fans. Great fans, man. Great fans. Uh, they, I mean, they really came and supported their Sharks. Yeah, I'm so, I'm, I'm, you know, that's what's good about the league. And they were super, you know, we were in the lobby and I, I met some of them. They came dressed up, all their stuff for them, and I, I just had to meet them. I walked up and, you know, I thanked them for coming. Thanks for being a fan. Thank them for making this a great sport and making the environment great. It was fun to see him at the game. It and, really was. And so I appreciate all those fans coming, and I'm looking forward to going to Jacksonville and, and getting ripped a little bit, but enjoying the same hospitality and the same professionalism from the ownership to the fans all the way down. So Absolutely. great league. I'm excited for everybody. There's going to be some kinks with everything, you know. Um, 
as far as operationals and some of the teams, but once we iron it out, of course, they announced New Jersey. Oh. The New Jersey flight. Okay. I love that name. I do love that name. I don't care what anybody says. You can have your own opinion. But I know that, you know, they got the New Jersey flight, and I think they're going to name their dance team the Flight Crew. <laughs> I heard they're going to use a big jet engine as part of, you know, some of the sounds in the arena. It's just that the whole marketing concept of that was pretty smart. Yes, that is smart. Um, uh, minority ownership. Really? I, I'm pretty sure. Don't get me wrong and don't quote me. But I know it's a, a former owner. Okay. And uh, that, that's one of the team. That's I think that's great for the league. Just they have such good marketing ideas from from the information that's passed along to me. Okay. It makes it all better. And I look forward to going to Trent and I look forward to Trent coming here. Awesome. That's that says something about the NAL. I mean, we, we have a dynamic um, leg, leg of leadership, and I'm just happy that Lion Nation is a part of it. Coach, we talked um, earlier about some some of your players that, that really shocked you, really just kind of stood out in the first game. Who, uh, who were those individuals? Uh, Kyle Griswold. Okay. Just all over the field. I mean, just the fourth down stops, flying around, making plays, hitting people. I thought Kyle stood out, and I thought Joe Marshall stood out. I didn't think uh, – I thought it was going to be a tough task for him, and their line was 370 across the board. Man, they were some meaty guys. There was big. There was yeah. a big boys. That's, that's, there were some big boys. But uh, Joe did a good job. I mean, they, there was three or four plays. He spun off, and he's running past the guy. The guy's pulling on the back of his shirt. We all saw it. It's oh, yeah. holding. But oh, yeah. that's a great play by their offensive lineman because that's an old veteran tactic. Exactly. Got to give him credit for when you get beat, you hold. But, the uh, you know, Joe played a great game. Played a really good game. And now, now – He's done set a standard. He's got to rise up and make it a little bit better. Uh, you know, one thing that I found very interesting, of course, you know, I, I could see everything from um, a bird's eye view from mm -hmm. where I sit. And it was just interesting but, uh, with their strategy with their kickoffs. They, 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 they really weren't going for the deuce. Um, it was all for them about ball placement. Did a good job. You know, I'm so typical of kicking the deuce. And, you know, in our league, just so the fans know, if the ball hits the wall in the field of play, anywhere between goal line and goal line, if it hits the wall, it's automatically dead. Mm. It's dead. Yeah. So they were line driving it from one side of the field to the other and kicking it through, and the ball, you know, football's not round. And so when that thing starts rolling, you don't know where it's going to go. That's right. And they it's were like trying a jumping to, jack. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to hit it off the wall, and it was hard to field, and it was really – it changed my perspective of kickoff. So, I mean – I had seen a couple teams do that, and I thought, yeah, I don't know, you know. But, hey, I mean, what would you say? What's it called? It's a copycat? There you go. It's nothing wrong with being a copycat as long as you're copying the right, the right cat. cat. Well, he did a pretty good job. Yeah, he did. He did a really good job. So I'm going to copy that and, and, and put that in this week. So there's some things we got to work on, you know, all the way across the board. Yeah, effective strategy. And, it's a good and, strategy. You know, strategy wins games just like defense wins games. So Always. You know. Lion Nation, once again, we like to just continue to ask for your support. We appreciate your uh, comments. Please, bring your comments to us. Coach, Coach, how do we get in contact with you? Definitely. Uh, go ahead and email me your questions. We'll read them on air next week. Uh, I'll edit it a little bit. I don't know. But, uh, just email me at uh, jason at columbuslions.net, or you can put them on the Facebook message or go to the Columbus Lions Facebook page. And uh, just send us a message. I, I'll read your comments on air, and we'll give you, out, give you a little shout-out. Awesome. I'm curious what your thoughts are or, 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 or anything. So send them in to us and we'll have fun with it next week. Good, bad, and ugly is what we're asking for. You heard it right here from Coach. He's not scared. So Coach, I'm sure you'll be prepared to see some interesting feedback. Lion Nation, again, we just appreciate your support. This is Roar Time. This is the man of the hour, Coach Jason Gibson. I'm your host. I'm just the guy that comes in and makes it all <laughs> lively for you. Love, love, love here, Lion Nation. Thank you so much for watching Roar Time.